Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Blue Tron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. Now for those of you with real lives, or at the very least something to do on Friday and Saturday, you may have missed that this weekend Sky Striker Trickstar emerged as the clear frontrunner deck. As always, what I like to do when we finally have a format heal is start tuning control. So today we're taking a look at the deck that benefits the most from a solved format, Paleozoic Frogs. So here's the list. As always, I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, what's your excuse exactly? This deck has been meta-relevant for like literally 18 months. <laughs> Paleozoic Frog is a deck that aims to use the incredibly flexible suite of Paleozoic traps alongside the already powerful Frog engine to repeatedly swamp the board with the Wednesday Frog himself, totally awesome. This advantage engine both sets up consistent negates as well as places problem cards in the number one inaccessible place, your side of the board. With the addition of Mistar Boy, the deck now has the ability to turn its additional frog activations into giant attack point swings, and it's not unlikely that they win the game in one turn instead of over several, like the plodding year-long pace set by other stun decks. This deck specifically is made to combat Sky Striker, and to a lesser extent, Sky Striker Trickstar. There are already some incidental reasons why Paleozoic Frog is uniquely positioned to play well against these archetypes. They have an extremely high number of flex slots in the main for well-positioned floodgates. They set their whole hand, making hand loops almost impossible. They resist almost every meta-relevant hand trap. I mean, ask how good it feels to Ash Blossom a special summoned Swap Frog. And as mentioned before, they set things they negate, so Kagari and Gage recycles seldom, if ever, happen. We're also not playing Canadia, the Book of Moon Paleozoic, since it does almost nothing to non-ray hands and as Trickstar almost exclusively produces those, along with the incredibly targeted Goes and Match and Mistake. We've also got Scapegoat and Morella in here because they're a quick and easy way to bin Imperial Order and get it back with Griffin, even though it'll never be on the first turn. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First, we have three Swap Frog, two Ronin Toten, and three Dupe Frog. For non-frogs, we've got two copies of Gamciel and three Droll and Lock, the most potent hand trap and removal suite against the Brandish Menace. For spells, we've got two Desires and three Scapegoat, and for traps, we've got three Oleonades, three Dynamiscus, three Morella, followed up by one Lost Wind, three Goes and Match, three Mistake, and the suite of old white men screwing stuff up, Imperial Order, and a whopping five Solemns. In the extra, we've got an Anomaly Karras and an Opabinia, followed by two totally awesome, a Borolode, Griffin, Nightmares Phoenix and Cerberus, Mistar Boy, Underclock Taker, Mermaid, two Link Spiders, and a Link Karibo. This last strategy works in paper only, but if you knock over your extra deck when siding and reveal an ulti falcon, they'll fear waking the dragons and won't blind MST your back row. So with that, let's jump into the games. But before we start with boring meta duels, let's see how this deck fares against another control deck that my heart bleeds for, Phantasm Spiral. You can see that my opponent has drawn pretty poorly, they don't have access to Pacifist the Phantasm City, the Lich Pin card to all of their stratagem, and oh no wait, there it is on the top of their deck. They've otherwise drawn pretty unremarkably a couple of copies of Summon Lament, aren't very good against us, and Phantasm Spiral Dragon means they haven't heard the good news that you can play this deck without the dragon. We get to set four and pass, which is about the most frightening thing you can do against any deck in this format. They draw into a pass Pacifist will set it and two cards and pass it back. Now, fun fact, it's called Pacifist because you do a lot of passing while it's out. We don't want to trigger the effect and give them a token. They're going to fire off an Into the Void, set to battle, and pass it back to us. Okay, we'll break the lock here, firing off this Morella so we can get a Morella in Grave. They'll activate Pacifist the Phantasm City to get a token. We'll chain Goes and Match so we can get a Morella from our graveyard, and whoo, there's the summon limit. So that prevents us from making Toad this turn after we normal summon Rodan Toten, but I'm pretty sure they're going to attack into Morella. It's just too excellent if it actually works. They'll attack, and we will flip up a lost win in damage step. Fun fact, Pacifist cannot activate then, so they'll pass it back to us and we'll be able to make Totally Awesome. The writing should be on the wall for our opponent. They need to do a lot of things to get over a Totally Awesome without a token on their side of the board, and when they go to make one, when we activate the standby phase effect of Tree Toad, they're going to activate Pacifist the Phantasm City, and we will respond with an Oleonades of our own. We're going to set this copy of Dynamiscus once we have the ability to, but first we'll get in for 3,200 points of damage with our Totally Awesome and our Swap Frog. We have a scapegoat in hand, but I think it's probably a little more important that we have access to Oleonades. Unfortunately, our opponent draws nothing and concedes. Well, that was fun, but now it's time to play against Meta. Our opponent for Game 2 is On Geist, the more popular control deck in the format by far. We're going second to have a copy of Droll and Lockbird in our opener, which is usually where we want to be, but unfortunately it's not very powerful against Geist. Still, we're going to fire it off after they activate this Pot of Duality, uh, just to get it out of our hand, and what do they find but a copy of Multifaker. They're going to go ahead and normal summon this Marionetter, getting themselves a protocol, setting a copy of Rivalry of Warlords, which conveniently we are unaffected by, and passing it back. We're going to special summon a Swap Frog, they're going to flip up a protocol, 
so they can get that sweet, sweet multi-faker action, get themselves a silky, and allow us to continue. We'll fire off this pot of desires. We find a dupe frog, which is excellent because now we can go into totally awesome. We're going to negate the effect of silk, and they're going to negate the effect of toad. With altergeist protocol, we will then activate the effect of toad to add the swap back to our hand and set two. Our opponent's going to start by setting a card and normal summoning a silky, getting in for 800 points of damage, followed by 16. Finally, link summoning a hextia. Now, that is my cue to fire off the dynamiscus. They will fire off their own rivalry of warlords to trigger the effect of multi faker. We'll get ourselves one of the two dynamiscuses that we have sent to graveyard. They'll get a melu seek and pass it back to us. Things are looking pretty good from this position. We're going to activate the effect of Ronin Totem. It gets negated with the effect of protocol. Melu seek adds another faker to hand. They'll flip up a personnel spoofing. We'll get another copy of dynamiscus from our graveyard and a Ronin Totem as well. They're going to shuffle their copy of faker back to get a kunk, then special summon a multi faker from their hand, getting a melu seek. We're going to go into totally awesome, then normal summon the swap frog so we have material to attack over the Kunkieri once we negate it. We will do just that so that we can still get in for a thousand points of damage post combat. Then we'll set this copy of scapegoat and pass it back to our opponent. The writing's kind of on the wall. They have no more trap activations. Even though they can search with personnel spoofing, they'll go ahead and get themselves a multi faker, but nothing they can do is going to be able to stop me from this point and they'll concede. Well, it's time for game three, and you know what that means a best of three versus Sky Striker. We've opened interestingly. I don't like to see two copies of Droll and Lockbird alongside a mistake in the same opener, but I am happy to see at least one of them since this card is so good against Sky Striker. Our opponent has an interesting grip as well. It makes Nightmares particularly easy, but really relies on this multi-roll staying on the field, which, spoiler, it will not. We'll go ahead and set three cards and pass it back to our opponent. They're going to start by activating this copy of multi-roll. First things first, they're going to jamming wave our center card, which is, of course, the Solemn Strike, preventing the Sky Blaster token from activating its effect. We're going to take a whole bunch of damage, then they will go into a Nightmare Phoenix, target my set card, and oh boy, they hit the Oleonades. So we get to chain it to the multi-roll, they set two and pass it back to us. We draw into whoo, a Ronin Totem. That's good enough. We're going to go ahead and flip up this mistake so we can get the Oli Nades out of our graveyard, normal summon the Ronin Totem, go into a Totally Awesome, get over the Phoenix for 300 and pass it back. In standby phase, we will activate the effect of Totally Awesome. They're going to chain a Widow Anchor, and yes, I will take Widow Anchor, please and thank you. We're going to use the effect of Totally Awesome to get ourselves a Swap Frog so we have material for the Ronin Totem in Grave. That's excellent, except we get infinite transients, but we can just return the Swap Frog to hand on our next turn, and our opponent has nothing else going, so we'll do just that, and they will go ahead and concede. So it's time for game two, and this time our opponent gets to go first, and boy, oh boy, do they have the grip. They're going to start by activating this copy of Foolish Burial Goods to send a Metal Foes Fusion to Graveyard, then activating Hornet Bit to get a token to their side of the field, which they immediately port out for Kagari. That returns Hornet to the hand, they'll use Fusion to draw onto another Ash Blossom, then make Shizuku, getting a second copy of Engage. Greedy, greedy. Our hand's pretty good, we're going to go ahead and special summon a Swap Frog, that gets Ashed, but no big deal. We'll just return to the hand and try it again, and, and there's the Transients, so... We're going to have to do this one without Ronin Totem, boys. We're going to set four and pass it back. Thankfully, setting four is quite good in hands that don't have Ronin Totem. They'll go ahead and Ash Blossom the Morella, which is no big deal. We just need the Trap and Graveyard. They'll then activate Engage, which we will gladly flip up Mistake 4. They'll Hornet Bit into another token, then get over our Swap Frog for 800 points of damage. In Main Phase 2, they'll go into Kagari. We will Solemn Strike it. They'll pass it back to us. We'll flip up the Gozen Match and play Morella Beats as long as we have to. They're locked out of the extra because of Gozen Match, but we draw into Ronin Totem and can now make totally awesome. We'll attack over the token, then pass it back to our opponent in standby. We'll get ourselves a frog from deck that allows us to search the one, the only oh, dupe frog. And thankfully, our opponent is now effectively locked out of the game because who boy is desires a terrible card with a toad on board. We're going to go ahead and use Swap Frog's effect to send Swap Frog to Graveyard, fuel for the Ronin Toad, and then normal summon again. Sending said Ronin Toad, we'll go into a Star Boy, use Totally Awesome to return a card to hand, then go into a second one off of the Ronin Toad effect. This allows us to get in for 2,700 points of damage and threaten lethal the following turn. Our opponent draws, who an infinite transient's just too little too late, and they concede. So we're back with the deck, and uh, what? I mean, I did not expect this dominant of a performance. It's not like we were playing against Rick and Morty viewers or anything like that, but none of those games felt even remotely close. Goes and matches insane. Mistakes insane. And I have never seen a more compelling metagame to play either of them. Previously, you were under constant threat of immediately dying to True Draco, but now you're going to see them maybe once in a blue moon. And whereas you used to have to one for one 18 times before you pulled ahead, now just flipping a Goes and match kind of wins you the game no matter the board state. It helps that this deck is like $100 also, and if you've got the drolls and believe in your ability to chew through brandish boards, I'd really recommend it. So that's that. Been a long time since I've been able to chill for Toad on this channel. Feels good, man. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time. And if you have a certain idea for a deck or archetype you want to see me play on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments section below and I will do my best to accommodate you. Otherwise, I'll see you on Wednesday.